The best health care is there in ways big and small. There when we most and least expect it. We may not see it, but we feel it. It lets us know we're not in this alone. Everyone deserves a health care partner who never quits. One who's there for what matters. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Financially Fit Podcast. I am your host, Andre Creighton. I'm really excited to be with you all here today. For those that are returning, thank you for continuing to rock with me. I really appreciate you all. And I hope that you're getting something out of this podcast as you apply it to your journey to becoming financially fit. For those that are new, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, You know, this is where you can find everything from my opinion on how you become financially fit on your journey. Because as I always say, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? So hopefully today you'll get something fruitful out of this episode that will continue to bring you back and join the other individuals that continue to watch the show. So, you know, I always start the show, you know, talking about, uh, you know, giving an example in my life or, you know, something that, you know, I wish I would have done differently in my life. And I think the reason for that is I, I want you all to, one, get to know me, but also be able to understand that. You know, it's not about where you start, it's about where you finish, right? And we all have things that we are struggling with and we're trying to figure it out. And sometimes you have to learn those lessons along the way to help propel you forward into the future, right? Um, So today we're going to be talking about real estate. You know, over the past uh, few podcasts, I've talked a lot about that preventative, you know, the preventative measures that you should be taking, such as life insurance and Uh, making sure you have medical and things like that that can be preventative in your life, right? And then also we talked about, you know, cutting down on your credit card debt and and increasing, you know, making sure that you're increasing your cash flow and uh, looking at your budget on a quarterly basis, right? Well, today we're going to talk a little bit more about investing, right? Now that you've done some of those things, you've got the protective measures in place, you've got you've got a good budget, you're cash flowing. Now, what do you do with that residual income, right? Uh, and, you know, a lot of people have delved into the real estate game. And it's 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 one of those that uh, is important if that's what you desire, right? You know, there's a statistic out there that says that 90% of millionaires are millionaires due to their investments in real estate. Now, I'm not telling you or asserting that if you invest in real estate that you're going to be a millionaire. But what I am telling you is that 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 statistic shows that, you know, there can be really good returns um, on real estate investing if you are smart about it. Right. So let's back up a little bit and let's talk about my my path. Um, So for my, you know, I graduated college in, in my 20s, early 20s. And I started renting uh, because, you know, that's what people do, right? They rent when they feel like they can't afford a home or maybe they don't want to deal with the upkeep of a home, right? Because it's expensive. Uh, So I go out and one of my high school buddies had just graduated college as well. And we're like, yeah, let's just rent an apartment together, Um, you know, split the rent in half. That'll save us some money. So we did that, right? We we rented a nice uh, apartment just outside of Minneapolis in, uh, in 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 a city called St. Louis Park probably about 10 minutes from downtown Minneapolis in Minnesota, right? Um, and it was great. You know, I was able to cash flow and have extra money to be able to do the things that I wanted to do. But what I didn't notice is that, you know, at the end of the day, the money that you're spending renting is just being basically thrown in the trash, right? Yes, you need somewhere to live and, you know, paying rent allows you, affords you that ability to have a nice place to live. However, you know, it doesn't beat equity, right? So, you know, one thing I wish I would have done in my 20s is, which a lot of people have kind of moved to, is buy a property, right? And and rent it out to several friends, right? And that's a good way to, if you can't afford the property necessarily on your own, or, you know, it's going to make things tight, 
uh, just being able to buy with friends and being able to um, have them pay on the mortgage as well as yourself. And then eventually, you know, someday you'll be able to cash flow and have enough money to be able to buy your own home. And maybe that turns into an investment home for you or you and your friends. Um, so that's something I wish I would have done early in my in my 20s. However, you know, as I always say, my my parents were very, very much working class, uh, working middle class. And, uh, you know, they worked very hard to have what we had. I'm very appreciative of them. Um, but there's a lot of lessons that I didn't get because they didn't have the knowledge to give it to me. Right. Um, and that's that that's those are the things that, you know, I wish I would have done in my in my 20s in regards to real estate. So let's talk about a little bit about why you should invest in real estate. You know, the why, right? Everyone wants to know, you know, everyone says you should invest in real estate, but not many people talk about the why. Uh, the, the number one why is cash flow, right? Um, you know, real estate tends to be, a mortgage tends to be cheaper than an apartment um, rent. And, you know, that's important because, you know, it really, not only are you building equity, but you're also being able to um, really build residual income because you're paying less on a, a living space than you would in a rental situation. Um, so the the ability to cash flow, um, the tax breaks are very important. So you know when you think about uh, people that rent, typically you can deduct. You, you know you can file your your rental rebate, and what isn't talked about a lot is if you make a certain amount of, a certain amount of money you might be in a threshold that is phased out right so you might not you might make too much to be able to get a rental rebate and that was what it was for me in my 20s i made enough money to to be able to rent but i made too much money where i couldn't get a rebate for my money um so that was uh you know something that you know when i think about wanting my desire and wish that i would have purchase a home, you know, being able to capitalize on that mortgage interest, being able to capitalize on deducting the real estate taxes, being able to capitalize on the mortgage premiums, right? Those are the things that when you think about cash flow, um, it's not just about the money that you're making on a biweekly basis, but planning for that tax strategy on how do you keep as much money in your pockets at the end of the day throughout the year, right? And that's, that, that's going to be very important. The other thing is equity building. So, you know, being able to build equity. Um, someday you might sell your home, right? And you've built equity in the home. And for those that don't know what equity is, um, you know, say you pay three hundred thousand dollars for a home uh, in your mortgage. Uh, the the remaining amount left to pay on your home is two hundred thousand, right? You've built a hundred thousand dollars in equity, right? Um, and you know, the the nice thing about home ownership is typically you know, your housing, your housing market value raises or appreciates over time, right? So that equity continues to grow the longer that you stay there while you're also paying down that mortgage and decreasing your liability. So, you know, it, it's a really, really good opportunity for you to build cash flow, um, to build wealth. Um, and then just the, the other things are it's, it's a, it's competitive, from a risk adjustment, uh, risk adjusted returns rate, and then also hedges against inflation. So when you think about a time right now where inflation rates are really high, right? Um, you know, cost of living, cost to buy food, cost to uh, drive your car, to put gas in your car, things are really high right now, right? Um, sometimes your the equity that you're building at home, that, that money can move faster than the inflation rate right because as in, as inflation rates are raising the value of the dollar or the money in your pocket is declining right because you can't you don't have as much purchasing power as you would have had in a lower inflation market so uh it's really important if you can think about those kind of four things as you're continuing down your real estate path those are the things that should propel you and you should be thinking about as you're thinking about um you know purchasing a home. The other piece that I think is important is diversification of your investments. So if you're like me, you invest in stocks, maybe you have some individual stocks you invest in, maybe you have some ETFs, maybe you have some bonds that are more safer investments that you invest in. Uh, 
maybe you are you invest your angel investor and you invest in, in startups which is very risky the way that you kind of mitigate the risk within your portfolio is by having safer investments and what we know about real estate is that it's a safer investment because typically um the the market whether it's in a declining market it always tends to turn back around right and that may not be the same with investing in a startup right we know that 90 percent of startups fell in the first year um and the rate is even higher for startups to make it past three years right so you can really kind of diversify your portfolio by investing in real estate uh what we know about real estate is historically real estate has returned or has appreciated about five to six percent annually and i know some of you might have say well what about 2008 when the market crashed you know and, and those things do happen right um you can never know uh you can never know that great things are going to happen with certainty right but what we do know is that those things always return right so in September of you know 2008, you know the average housing price uh, had declined by 20% um, from their from their peak, which was in 2006. So within two years, the people that had bought homes in 2006, you know they had saw that they were underwater. Um, and when I say underwater, that means that they owed more on their home than the value of their home was worth. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, um, why that occurred. But the reason why I feel real estate is such a, an adequate and uh, important investment is because, you know, you fast forward four years later and into 2012 and home prices had fully recovered. Right. So if you were, you know, uh, if you were fortunate enough and had the ability to uh, make it through that four years of, you know, some really tough times here in the U.S., uh, you were in a really, really good spot in 2012 because the market had recovered, right? And we know that a lot of people hadn't recovered, hadn't, uh, didn't make it to 2012. We know that there were a lot of foreclosures um, in 2008, and you know what that did was it allowed a lot of investments, investment uh, investors to come in and purchase a lot of these homes that have been foreclosed on at a very lower price, at a very low price, right? And uh, to my opinions on that is that is part of the reason why we're in a high uh rental um rate environment right now is that you know there's there became kind of a compression on like the the amount of people that were kind of homestead so the people that were actually living in the home families versus the people that were actually investing in these homes to be able to rent them out to tenants right so um nonetheless um the people that the investors that invest in these homes made a lot of money right a lot of these investors were selling their homes uh pre-covid um to get that you know had to get that appreciation that had occurred over that 10-year mark right um and that i think we saw that in you know kind of the the new bidding wars that we see now in the housing market where a lot of times individuals don't even go to look at homes anymore um, the markets that had been that competitive where someone goes on to Zillow, they see a nice home they like, they scroll through the pictures, and they don't even have time to go and visit because there's 30 offers on the house already, right? So they have to go kind of in blindly without an inspection, without any of those um, key details that you usually would see in people that are trying to buy a home and put down an offer. And that's why a lot of offers were coming in forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 over asking price. Uh, we've started to see that kind of calm down as we're kind of entering what a lot of economists are saying might be a, a recession. Now, while we don't think it will be 2008 uh, recession-like, uh, we do envision that there will be some tough times here coming. And we've seen it thus far already in America with various large corporations laying off hundreds of people. Um, and, and these are times where a lot of people, you know, unfortunately start to lose their homes and it's a it's a great time for you if whether you are someone that's lo a family looking to get a home or if you're an investor trying to invest in multiple properties and build a portfolio this is the time to really be looking at that even in a high interest rate envi environment because what we do know is that you can always refinance your home later down the line so what that means is 
you may come in now and, and uh, interest rates may be 7%, 8%, right? But five, six years from now, the rate the rates might drop back down to 4%. Uh, and that's the time when you might want to capitalize on uh, refinancing your home. It'll lower your interest, your, it'll lower your, lower your payment um, because you will have paid down some of that mortgage. Um, and then inevitably, because the interest rate is lower, the payment will likely be lower as well. So those are the things, you know, really to keep in mind as you're thinking about whether real estate is is, is right for you. I think a misconception in real estate is that you have to have multiple properties, um, properties all over the place. And that's not the case. You know, I think that you, the, the important thing is to figure out what works for you and maybe start somewhere. Maybe it's buying one property. Maybe it's buying a duplex and renting out. You, maybe you live on one side and uh, you rent out the other side. And once you feel comfortable and you've built enough cash flow, maybe use that cash flow to buy another property, right? Um, and it's kind of that domino effect of building your real estate property, your real estate portfolio over time uh, versus feeling like, you know, I, I need to have 10 properties a day. You know, that's just not realistic unless you come from a family that has money or you, you know, maybe you have a ton of money in, in reserves. Um, for those that are worried about kind of the, where we are as a society right now from an economical standpoint, what I will tell you is that, in, in my opinion, I don't think that we will get into a situation like 2008 because I think that individuals are a lot smarter now too. I think that, you know, we're finding that people are, their balance, personal balance sheets are, are well more capitalized. So what I mean by that is people have more money in their savings. People have paid down more of their debt, their, their liabilities. Now, I know that student loans are kind of something that are um, hindering a lot of people, especially people my age from uh, getting homes. And, and I do believe that there will be some type of student loan forgiveness and, and uh, coming along some at some point um, that will allow some of us uh, that are my age that maybe had those higher college expenses uh, to really achieve that American dream, right? Uh, the American dream is owning a home. Uh, so as I always say, it's not about how much money you make. The power is in how much money you keep. Thank you. I'm your host, Andre Creighton. See you later. Ridership on Metro Transit is up. The number of folks taking buses, light rail, commuter trains has jumped by 21% over last year. This means more reliable, extended service and more connection for all of us riders. Have you noticed the expanded service on some key routes? Trips have been added to the Metro Orange Line and the frequency has improved to every 15 minutes. And the Metro A line operates every 10 minutes between noon and 6 p.m. on weekdays. Not only that, the bus route that operates in the core routes 2, 10, and 18 all have weekday service increased to every 10 minutes between noon and 6 p.m. All across the system, you're seeing service that is available earlier and later and more service available on weekends. So come along for the ride on your Metro Transit. COVID-19 is scary, but vaccines remain the best way to keep you and your family safe from getting sick this fall. The new updated COVID-19 vaccine is now available for all Minnesotans aged six months and older. Whichever vaccine you get, you will be safer with the shot. There are still lots of myths about COVID-19 that are circulating in our community. Don't get tricked. If you have any questions, you can ask your trusted healthcare provider or your pharmacist for their advice. It's easy to find the closest clinic, hospital, or pharmacy where you and your family can get your updated vaccine. Go to vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. You just put in your zip code and you'll find a convenient nearby option. It's not just another day in your life. Things are changing for the better. At Comcast, we see those changes and we're thinking about how we use technology today to live, work, learn, and play. And we're building for the future now 
so we're better prepared for the wants and needs of tomorrow. That's why Comcast is rolling out multi-gig internet speeds to more than 50 million homes and businesses before the end of 2025, making our already industry-leading network even faster, smarter, greener, and more reliable. Over the decades, Comcast has been your partner, working hard to serve your community, and will continue to be your partner. We're expanding our gigabits so you can enjoy the tiny bits that matter most. When I walked across that stage at my high school graduation, I was excited, but confused about my next step. Then I walked through the doors at Doherty Family College. Doherty Family College is part of the University of St. Thomas. It's a two-year college that lets you earn an associate's degree and puts you on a path to your bachelor's degree. Classes are small, so I have a personal relationship with professors committed to my success. Like the name says, they treat us like family. They call us scholars because they believe we could do anything we put our minds to. They set us up for excellence with free tutoring, and that's not the only thing that's free. Laptops, books, even breakfast and lunch, and bus fare. That's part of the package here at Doherty Family College. It's even free to apply. So do like I did. Go to dfc.stthomas.edu and set up a tour. We'd be excited to welcome you to our family here at Doherty Family College. You know Shaletta makes you laugh. But did you know Shaletta Brundage can also make you think and boost your business? Media personality, activist, and comedian Shaletta Brundage founded Shaletta Makes Me Laugh to celebrate and share the best of black culture. It's a podcasting platform. You can download 10 weekly podcasts hosted by African-American subject experts at ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com is also a production house creating broadcast quality commercial content. And Shaletta and her team of storytellers create powerful promotional campaigns to get businesses the brand awareness they're looking for. Some of Minnesota's top businesses trust Shaletta, and you can too. Get out the word about your events and products and get in front of communities of color with ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. She's got the power to help your business. 